Welcome to today's episode of the Hashtag Fish podcast. In this session, we dive into the transformative world of selective breeding for aquatic species, a practice that is not only reshaping the future of aquaculture, but also how we understand the genetic potential in marine life. So imagine a world where fish grows faster, resist to diseases better, and adapt more readily to the environmental changes that challenge traditional aquaculture practices. Actually, the journey began over 4,000 years ago in China, and now with less than 10% of aquaculture species benefiting from genetic improvement, the scope for enhancement is vast. The review discusses genetic gains made through breeding programs, notably greater than 12% per generation of improvement in growth rates and disease resistance when using family-based selection strategies. We have now moved to genomic selection, but that's for the next episode. One captivating story from the field involves the breeding program for Atlantic salmon that started back in 1975. This initiative marked a significant turning point showcasing genetic gains in body weight as much as 115% over five generations. This not only tells a tale of this scientific endeavor, but also the potential to profoundly impact global food production and sustainability. As we discuss these topics, we also reflect on the ongoing challenges and the innovative strategies that could lead to a future where aquaculture meets the global demand for protein without compromising the health of our planet. This is more than science. It's a narrative of hope and resilience played out through the genes of the aquatic species that feed billions of people today. So join me as we dive deeper into this fascinating subject, exploring how the lessons in selective breeding we have learned in the past and the innovations of today are paving the way to a more sustainable and prosperous future in aquaculture. I am José Domingos and I'm passionate about marine biology and aquaculture. I hope you guys enjoy this podcast, which I've put with all my heart for you. All right, get ready because today we're gonna to be diving into a world where we could be seeing twice as much shrimp and salmon. Really? And it's all thanks to selective breeding in aquaculture. It's pretty amazing. We've got some research here okay. that shows just how powerful selective breeding is mm -hmm. for revolutionizing how we produce seafood. Yeah. It's really vital for feeding the planet as it keeps growing. Okay, so first, for anyone listening who doesn't know, sure. what is aquaculture? Aquaculture is basically just farming in water. Oh, okay. Think fish, shellfish, even seaweed. Gotcha. And get this, okay. it's the fastest growing food production sector globally. Really? Even yeah. faster than land-based? Yeah. Wow, that's kind of mind-blowing. Yeah, it really is. And here's a fact that even surprised me. Right. Over 40% of aquaculture production happens in freshwater. Wow. Even though freshwater makes up a tiny sliver of the Earth's surface. So all those fish farms that we see in lakes and rivers are really pulling their weight. Yeah, they really are. I'm guessing, though, that the future of aquaculture really lies with the ocean. You got it. The research suggests that most of the future expansion will be in marine environments. Okay. Which makes sense when you think about how big the oceans are. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I know a lot of people think that red meat is like the yeah. best source of protein. Yeah. Yeah. But fish is a nutritional powerhouse too, yeah. right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. There's research that actually compares the amino acid content of fish and beef. Okay. And there are certain areas where fish has more, uh -huh. like higher levels of lysine, mm -hmm. which is an essential amino acid that we need to get from our food. So it's not just about the protein. It's about the right types of protein. Exactly. And it makes me think about... Our friend, Dr. Jose Domingos. Yeah. Who's been working with Barramundi. Yeah. Selective breeding for over a decade. He must have some really interesting insights from all his work with hatcheries. Yeah. Fish are also really efficient at converting feed into meat. Because they're cold-blooded. Right. They don't have to burn all their energy just staying warm like us. Exactly. And look at the statistic. Okay. Genetically improved salmon actually retain 2.3 times more energy from their feed than poultry. Wow. And 1.6 times more than pigs. 
Hold on, let me get my calculator out. Yeah. So it's a huge difference. So we're talking about producing more food with less resources. Yeah. And that brings us to the star of the show, selective breeding. Okay, so what is selective breeding and why is it such a game changer for aquaculture? It's kind of like matchmaking, but for fish. Huh? You choose parent fish with desirable traits, okay, like okay. fast growth or disease resistance, and breed them together. So you're basically guiding evolution in a certain direction. Exactly. And it works really well for aquatic species because they reproduce so much. Oh, right. Think thousands of eggs from a single female. Wow, that's a lot of genetic combinations. Yeah, you get greater selection intensity, which leads to faster genetic gains. The research actually shows that you can get growth rate increases of almost 13% per generation. So we're not talking about small improvements. This is big. Yeah, Niatilapia and Atlantic salmon have already seen growth rate increases of 85 and 115% in just five generations. That's incredible. It's like a superpower for aquaculture. Yeah. And it's not just about growing faster. We can breed for disease resistance. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Which is really important for sustainability and ethical aquaculture. Totally. And the research shows that selective breeding can increase disease resistance by an average of 12.5% per generation. Wow. That's pretty significant. Healthier fish, less antibiotics, yeah. more efficient production. And speaking of production, what does the research say about the future potential of aquaculture? Oh, it's remarkable. Wow. This number blew my mind. If we could boost average marine production to match what China is already doing, we could theoretically see a 20-fold increase in global aquaculture production. Wait, 20-fold? That's crazy. Yeah. But we need to make sure it's done sustainably, right? Yeah. We don't want to solve one problem and create a bunch of new ones. You're absolutely right. And that's where things get more complicated. Well, let's dive into that then. Sure. What are the biggest challenges we face as aquaculture grows? One of the biggest challenges is how do we feed all these fish? Right. If we're increasing production so much, where's all that food going to come from? Exactly. Especially if we're trying to get to a 20-fold increase. We can't rely on just traditional fish meal. No. It's like trying to bake a giant cake with a tiny teaspoon of flour. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. So researchers are looking into all kinds of alternative feed sources. Okay. Like bacterial protein meal. Okay. Which is made from bacteria that convert things like methane into protein. So basically turning trash into fish food. Yeah, kind of. That's pretty cool. It is. And then there are byproducts from other industries hmm. that we can use in fish feed. Okay. And also algae, which is full of nutrients. Yep. It's about making aquaculture more circular, Wrong. less reliant on using so many resources. Another challenge is the impact of aquaculture on the environment. Right, of course. We don't want to create pollution or destroy habitats just to make more food. Yeah, it's all about balance. Mm -hmm. How do we meet our needs without damaging the planet? So what are some solutions? Well, one approach is to use more sustainable farming practices. Okay. Like polyculture. Polyculture. Yeah, where you raise different species together. Oh, okay. In a way that mimics natural ecosystems. So like an underwater garden where different species benefit from each other. Exactly. It creates a more balanced and resilient system. And then there's sea ranching. Sea ranching. Yeah. What's that? It's where you release fish into the ocean and then harvest them later. Uh -huh. So you give them a little vacation and then they end up on our plates. Yeah, something like that. Uh -huh. But these alternative farming methods can really help lower the impact aquaculture has on the environment. Right. And selective breeding can also play a big role in sustainability. Yeah, we talked about disease resistance. Right. But are there other traits we can select for that would be good for the environment? Oh, absolutely. For example, we can breed fish that are more efficient at turning their food into meat. Okay. Which means we need to feed them less overall. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And we can also breed fish that are better suited to specific environments, mm -hmm. which can reduce stress and make them healthier. It sounds like selective breeding isn't just about more production, but also more sustainability and ethical aquaculture. Precisely. And things are getting really advanced now. Right. Researchers are using DNA technology wow, to that's... make selective breeding even more precise and effective. How does that work? Well, remember how we said fish produce so many offspring? Yeah, thousands. It's hard to find the fish with the best genes. Okay, yeah. But with genomics, scientists can now actually identify specific genes well. and genetic markers that are linked to the treats we want. So it's like having a blueprint. Yes. That tells you which fish have the best genes. Exactly. And this is leading to huge discoveries. For example, researchers have found a gene in Atlantic salmon okay. that controls over 80% of the variation in resistance 
resistance to a disease called IPN. Wait. 80 percent. That's huge. It is. And now breeders can use these markers to select resistant fish. So it's like a cheat sheet for breeding. Yeah, exactly. That's really cool. And this is just the beginning. As we learn more about fish DNA, we can find even more possibilities. Wow. Imagine breeding fish that grow even faster. Wow. Or need even less food <sighs> or have even more omega-3s. Okay, so healthier fish, a healthier planet, and healthier people. Hmm. It's a win-win-win. Hmm. But are there any downsides we need to think about with this technology? Well, one concern is the impact it could have on wild fish. Right. What if they escape and breed with wild fish? Yeah. Could that disrupt ecosystems? That's a good point. It's why researchers are carefully studying the impacts of aquaculture. Okay. One way to approach this is to breed fish that are specifically good for farms, mm -hmm. so they're less likely to thrive in the wild. So kind of like breeding a racehorse, it's great on the track, but might not survive in the wild. Exactly. We want to make sure these super fish are only good for farms. Yeah. And another approach is to just make sure they can't escape in the first place. Right. By improving farms, using sterile fish, or even having land-based farms. Mm -hmm. It's about finding the right balance between the benefits of aquaculture and protecting the oceans. It's a complex issue. What other challenges do we need to be aware of? One thing I was thinking about is how affordable this all is. If we want aquaculture to be a major source of protein for everybody, we need to make sure everyone can afford it. That's a really important point. We can talk about all this amazing technology, yeah. but if people can't afford the seafood, it doesn't really help. Right. It's like having a cure for a disease, but only rich people can get it. Exactly. We yeah. need to make sure that everyone benefits from aquaculture. What other advancements do you think we might see in the future? Oh, there's so much more. Like we've talked about selective breeding and genomics, right. but there's AI and machine learning. Oh, wow. Imagine AI that can analyze tons of data about fish. Okay. Like their behavior, how they grow, and the conditions of their environment. It's like having a computer assistant for your fish farm. Right. That would be awesome. It can help us stop diseases mm -hmm. and figure out the best ways to feed them. Yeah. Even design better farms. And then there's gene editing too, right? Oh, yeah. Stuff like CRISPR. Okay. This lets scientists change the DNA of an organism. Wow. So you could introduce good traits much faster than with breeding. So we could engineer fish that are even better. Yeah, with better disease resistance, faster growth, or even more nutrients. That's incredible. But like... Any powerful technology we have to be careful. Of course. There are ethical concerns and risks that we have to think about. Right. It's like we have this key that can unlock all these possibilities. Yeah. But we have to use it responsibly. Exactly. We need to talk about these technologies. Mm. What are the benefits? What are the risks? Yeah. We have to make sure that we use them in a transparent way. Right. And think about the long-term consequences. And that's where channels like Hashtag Fish can really help. Oh, yeah. For sure. They can educate people. Mm -hmm. about aquaculture yeah, and help everyone understand how complex it is. It's a team effort right? to create a sustainable and fair food system. Yeah, It takes collaboration and innovation mm -hmm. and everyone being willing to learn. So if you want to learn more about aquaculture, yeah. go subscribe to hashtag fish on YouTube. It's a great channel. Dr. Domingos does a fantastic job of explaining complex topics. He really does. In a fun and interesting way. Mm -hmm. You might even get inspired to work in this field yourself. You never know. Leave a comment, too, and tell us what other topics you want to learn about. Yeah, what other deep dives do you want to see? <laughs> and if you need any help with your shrimp farm or fish hatchery, get in touch with Dr. Jose Domingos. He's got so much knowledge. Yeah, he's been helping hatcheries around the world produce great fish fry for over 10 years. He's the expert. Well, that wraps up our deep dive on aquaculture and selective breeding. Yeah, it was a good one. We hope you learned something new and got a better understanding of this really important field. And we hope you'll join us next time for another exciting topic. Until then, keep learning and exploring.